Hello folks. I feel like I need to make a short video about the heating situation at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I am already getting <coughs> reservations for the month of October, so I just want to have full disclosure about the heating situation at the various tiny houses. We are sitting on the porch of the Blue Dragon tiny house right now. So if I recall last year in 2022, it was, we got our first frost right around uh, the first day of fall in late September. So any time after September 15th even, uh, it can get you know, close to freezing, uh, and then I close on November 1st, so between September 15th and November 1st, you know, the weather forecast, particularly at night, is a bit of a crapshoot, and so here, I'm just going to go through the three tiny houses from best to worst, as it were, uh, so if you are renting in late September or during the month of October, we only have one tiny house which is 100% warm and toasty, and that is Hummingbird. If you want your whole house to be nice and toasty, you need to rent Hummingbird. Uh, of course, the trade-off with Hummingbird is you know, the entire house on the inside is 7 feet by 7 feet, and half of that is taken up by the bed. It has one twin bed with a mattress measuring 39 inches. Now, a lot of couples are fine with that. But do keep in mind, if you want to be 100% sure you're going to be toasty warm inside your tiny house, you need to go with Hummingbird. <clears throat> so next, the, the mid-level one would be Seahorse in the Pines. Now, Seahorse in the Pines is only 8 by 10 feet. So it's a little bit bigger than Hummingbird. It's 80 square feet, and half of that is taken up by the bed, but the bed in Seahorse is a double bed measuring 54 inches wide, so there's more room for couples. Uh, now, even though it's only 8 by 10 feet, Seahorse has very high ceilings and to keep it cool in the summer because these are pretty much summertime cabins. So Seahorse does have a, an electric <coughs> extension cord running all the way from the main cabin about 500 feet away. So by the time the power gets to Seahorse it's a little bit diminished after running 500 feet through, a, through an extension cord. I do have a small electric space heater in Seahorse, which should help a lot. It should keep it from getting, you know, really cold. Uh, but I've never put it to the test. We just opened Seahorse on Memorial Day, so we've never put the heater to the test. I do think Seahorse, uh, it will not be as toasty warm as Hummingbird, but it will be warmer than Blue Dragon. So Blue Dragon is the main one I want to talk about. Blue Dragon is our biggest tiny house by far. It measures 10 by 12 feet. Um, and again, like Seahorse, it has very high ceilings. 
It has a whole lot of windows and has no insulation. Uh, Hummingbird is very well insulated. The first one I'm talking about, Seahorse and Blue Dragon were built as summertime cabins. They have no insulation. They have high ceilings and a whole lot of windows. So they do get cold at night. And for all kinds of reasons, I cannot heat Seahorse or Blue Dragon, particularly Blue Dragon. I cannot risk putting a wood heater in here. I have gone, I have, you know, thought through wood. I thought through various propane heaters, and um, I've even thought about uh, kerosene. And just for all kinds of reasons, I don't have one penny of insurance on any of these places between burning the houses down and having a guest burn themselves and get seriously injured. For all kinds of reasons, I simply cannot have a heater that makes an open flame. Uh, I, ju I just simply can't take the risk. So that's never going to happen. There's never going to be wood, propane, or kerosene heat <clears throat> in Blue Dragon. <coughs> so what Blue Dragon runs off of, and you can find a video on this, is a 2,000 watt Blue Eddy generator. Okay, so that little generator... I, I mean, for a few minutes, you can plug in. I have this little portable electric heater, which will basically is enough to blow some warm air on you. Uh, there, There is no way that this generator is going to heat Blue Dragon. Uh, it just, uh, it, it, it isn't going to happen. You can have a little bit of warm air blowing on you. Now, what Blue Dragon will have, all three of the tiny houses, Blue Dragon, Seahorse, and Hummingbird, will have electric blankets. I am pretty sure that the generator can handle an electric blanket. So while you're actually in bed, or I guess you could take the electric blanket and wrap yourselves in it, you know, sitting out here on the deck or whatever, uh, to the extent that an electric blanket can keep you warm, I will provide electric blankets. But I just need to caution you that... Uh, particularly Blue Dragon. If you rent Blue Dragon, you are running the risk of being a little bit chilly at night. Now, of course, all three tiny houses have their own individual fire rings, so you're certainly welcome to make a nice toasty campfire outside the cabins uh, during the evenings and you'll have the electric blanket on the bed. But I just want to <clears throat> make full disclosure that the weather can be cold um, starting in about mid-December until I shut down in late October. And there's really nothing more I can do about it. As much as I would love to put wood stoves particularly in Blue Dragon. It's just, I'm sorry folks, it's just not going to happen. So, <clears throat> if you do not want to take the risk of not having a toasty warm cabin, then uh, either rent Hummingbird or good luck on finding another cabin elsewhere that does have heat.
And that's really all I can say on the matter. So come see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm, because it is beautiful up here in October. I wish I could think of a way out of this. Bye, folks.